Today we have a special interview with detective from London. From the UK, yeah. From, yeah. The, from London? Uh, uh -huh. No, it's in the further north. It's uh, not actually in London. Okay. Yeah. So, for a long time I always want to have uh, detectives here. Thank you. You know, or oh, real cops. Yeah. So, are you officially a cop? Yeah, I'm a detective sergeant. So, you have a badge of policemen? Yeah. Like. You go everywhere, you're just like, hey, this is police and this is detective. Yeah. What we see in the films, like if there is a scenery of murder or something, you are the guy who comes and show the badge and kind of chicken things. Yeah. That's what Pretty you Pretty much, yeah. That's like yeah. that. Yeah. Okay, so you're a real deal. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, well, you know, this is, the on, this is the only interview that I'm doing early in the process because usually yeah. we do it after people leave. Okay. Which is like, you know, a month. Yeah. You know, people usually come here for a long time. Yeah. In your case, it's very short time that you are here, so yeah. it's not exactly, you know, there is not not much uh, experience that you have with the medicine yeah. to share. But still, it was two ceremonies, and we still have one more tomorrow. So yeah, it's a bit short visit, but still, it's a visit. So yeah, made most. Yeah. yeah, so I thought maybe we can talk about, like, general about, you know, yourself, like, your career there, yeah. and then, and then you know, your experience here with us, and then maybe we can chat about how would you, you know, the whole thing of plant medicine, and yeah. all this stigma and illegality of it in the West, you know, how yeah. that would merge in the mainstream you know, culture and especially in the, in the police force, yeah. it, it, because it's like it's kind of a strange situation. You know, you here you yeah, are yeah. a police yeah. and a detective doing the medicine yeah. where it's legal. It's legal here. You yeah, know, you don't break any laws. Yeah, <coughs> but at, at the same time, back in you in UK, you go to jail for this. Yeah, yeah. So how I've do seen, you? I've seen sanity of it all. How do you reconcile all this? You know, how, how it's difficult. You know, um, yeah, I have to travel to do the plant medicines, um, but for me, it's totally worth it. It's transformed my life. Um, it's rescued my marriage. Um, it was on the rocks a few years ago, um, and I had the call in to try ayahuasca plant medicine um, with the Honeyquin tribe from Brazil, and it's just totally transformed my life. Just completely opened my heart realised where I was going wrong um, and just brought love into my life um, real authentic love um, yeah it just blew me away that was both from your side and your wife's side yes together yes she she started to do plant medicine before me and I thought in Peru actually um, I thought she was completely insane <laughs> switched off to doing drugs my wife doing drugs <laughs> yeah, yeah you know she need to be arrested <laughs> yeah um, so yeah, we didn't see eye to eye initially, um, but really, I think she kind of just pleaded with me to try it, see if it would open my heart and to try and another chance between us, um, and she was so right, yeah. It did? It did, yeah, yeah, um, just open communication with us, a lot more open to, to things, a lot more sensitive, a lot more uh, connected with my emotions, um, even with the job I was doing go to horrible situations, difficult, you know, death. Uh, I mean, that's through your work? Yeah, yeah. So I close off to be able to do that work. I uh, just shut myself down emotionally. And that gets trapped. Um, and that was really brought out when I went to Brazil. Uh, really good process. Mm. Which was hard, but, yeah, worth it. It makes sense, of course. How do you... <laughs> how do you deal with all those... Are you dealing with murders? Yeah. So, like the worst thing. Yeah. 
like murders, kidnapping, right? Yeah. It's like yeah, yeah. Yeah. The, the worst violent yeah. crimes. Yeah. It's like you can, I mean, you deal with it all day, then you come home. Yeah. It's still in your head. It is, yeah. yeah. And here's your wife, here's your family. I mean, how yeah. do you mix the two? You just try and, uh, or I try to, uh, as a kind of defense mechanism, just try and compartmentalize it in my mind and try and shut off. As soon as I was at home, I tried to shut off from work uh, and just carry on with the family. And you can do that, do that to a degree, but it, over time it gets trapped in the body. Um, and yeah, just not very emotional. You know, wouldn't, stuff wouldn't upset me uh, because I'd just go into that. That so mode, like uh, close up more, close up, and just go into the mechanics. Robot, kind of robotic uh, yeah, mode. Yeah, absolutely. Otherwise, you can't handle that. No, you can't handle it's it's impossible. So, is it like every detective is doing that? Yes, yeah, it's like that's sure. what you do. Yeah, for sure. And then we we have a close connection with co-workers and colleagues because you know we use kind of dark humour to to accept what we've just seen or what we've just experienced. How? Give me an example. So you would. Um, you would maybe, uh, I'm just trying to think of an example, just maybe just bring, laugh and bring humour into, the dark humour into to what, what we've just experienced, you know, if it was a death. Like laughing or, about this Yeah, thing, yeah. So just to kind of discharge some Absolutely, and people from the outside would probably think, well, that's really insensitive yeah, and yeah, wrong. Yeah, yeah, Hear people dying and you're yeah, laughing. Yeah, yeah it's a mechanism, it's, it's, a way mm. of, it's a way of processing what you've just experienced. Yeah, for sure. So that might, must be tough for all of them, like having yeah. a normal life. Yeah. So it, would that be including police officers too? Like street police? Yeah, like, totally. Yeah. Um, you know, they're dealing with broken families, um, drug addicts, alcohol. Uh, domestic violence. Domestic violence is a big thing, yeah. Um, so yeah, it's difficult things they have to deal with. Mm. So after doing the medicine, what change have you seen yourself? I like just, in terms of work? Um, so I feel a lot lighter. Um, initially, when I went back from Brazil, I found it extremely difficult to integrate. Uh, really difficult. Um, because I was so full of light, and, and my heart was open, and I was going back into those dark energies, uh, people trans, you know, ignorant to, to these kind of practices and working and doing work on themselves um, so I came back and I was a kind of outcast <laughs> um, I spoke about what I did uh, your department knew yeah 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 and how they took it? it they just thought I was a freak <laughs> <laughs> but no totally no like no not charging you with something like no. breaking the law you no, know like no. just like you're doing somewhere yeah. Else, and it's not what we do, but you're yeah. crazy. You're totally but it's alien okay. to them, totally alien. They've never heard of plant medicines, never heard of uh, indigenous people um, doing the work with, with others. And, and so, yeah, I've slowly talk about it and just open about it. And uh, I started a meditation group at work in my own time, so uh, people come to that. So, like, that's in the police department? Yeah, yeah. So how do they look at that? Um, like the boss, what's your boss saying? Like? He thinks it's fantastic because he can see that it's an extremely mm -hmm. toxic, stressful environment. So they see he see people that are more relaxed, yeah, more yeah. calm, yeah. like doing their work. But they're still doing their work. It's yeah. not like they don't want to go to work. No, not at all. It's just um, allowing them to have that stress release and just to relax. Everyone's on the go all the time, aren't they? Anyway, uh, it's just about to have that time, short time, just to relax. Center yourself and become aware of, mm. of what's going on. So you're that guy on the call. They're calling you, right? So yeah. If something happens, you get a call. Yeah. And you go on the go scene. Out, yeah, go to the crime scene. To the crime scene. Yeah. Uh, so when you came from Brazil first time, full of medicine, yeah. In you like the whole new dimension just was open up, yeah. and now you're like going to your first crime scene. Do you remember what was the first crime? Oh, uh, I'm trying to think what it was. Uh, like right upon your return. It may, may have been a suspicious death where we weren't sure what the circumstances were, whether it was a crime or whether uh, it was a natural cause, uh, something like that. Um, yeah, and I found, I found, found myself feeling more spiritual uh, about that person. 
I'm trying to be more respectful and more uh, sensitive with that person uh, and obviously trying to find out what was going on. And when you dealt with actual criminals, like the person returned, what was... Yeah, it's interesting actually, because... Uh, yeah, I try. Before I'd be really judgmental and say, this is wrong, they've done wrong, they need, you know, justice needs to be served here, and I'm doing my utmost to bring justice to the family. Very judgmental, you know, their career of, you know, career of crime, they're never going to be any good, and they're going to never come off that, you know, never going to come out of prison, or there's that commit crime, in prison, come out, commit crime. And so I was very judgmental, and I try not to be now, I try and think, well, we're all one. Um, that's their karma, that's that's what they're processing, that's their path. With um, trying to be more positive outlook to say, you know, they could, could they could change, they could become spiritual. I mean, I never thought that I would ever become a spiritual person. Uh, I was just totally switched off, so it's, it's possible for everybody. So I just try and be less judgmental like the people that I deal with and just be, try and be on a level with them and just accept that, you know, they are a soul in there and they're just going through this, this karma. So you're still seeing a soul in the murderer? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it, it, it's difficult, but I really try and make an effort and just try and say, you know, we're all, we're all one. Um, and just, they're just playing their karma, right? Uh, a thief's a thief. Um, just try and accept it, which is difficult. Just trying to be less judgmental. So you're still doing your job, yeah. You know, catching the guy, yeah, bringing him to justice. But inside your heart, yeah, you have kind of compassion for him. Yeah, yeah. Is that what? It is? Yeah, that's what I'm. But do trying you, to open up. Do you feel like it interfering with your ability to do your job, or it's just a powerful thing that you just experience as you do the same thing? It certainly doesn't. <coughs> certainly doesn't have any consequences. I certainly do my job, and I'm probably just more human about it. Um, I'm a lot more sensitive to how my colleagues are feeling as well. Uh, we have one-to-one -one chats and I'm asking how they are. Uh, encourage uh, mindfulness, meditation, that kind of thing. And sometimes it sinks in. I just feel like I've got so much light in me from the plant medicine that I'm doing is that I'm trying to plant the seed. Mm -hmm. uh, some people, a lot of people back away. But you may just say something that triggers something where they, they change. What I try and do. It's all about planting that seed and just being open. Else we're never going to change, are we? But did you talk about plant medicine with them? I have done, yeah. You have? Yeah, yeah. Like with the criminals? Um, people you catch? I don't think so. I don't think I've been in that kind of situation where I'm talking freely about that. I can't, can't think of a situation. But I quite often talk to colleagues about it. Colleagues, yes, yeah, but not other people. I find that particularly uh, ayahuasca very difficult to articulate to people that have no, have no idea. It's mm -hmm. really difficult on to what my experiences have been with it. I mean, imagine the situation you catch a you know, bank robber, a robber or, or somebody and say, hey, you know, by the way, drink ayahuasca. <laughs> like when you get out of jail, yeah. check out, sort of you know, do some research, you know. Yeah, yeah. It's like, that would be. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> why not? <laughs> I mean, why not? <laughs> you know, it's like, you know, you know a, a thief is it's one thing, but when, when it comes to like uh, violent crimes, like yeah. I have a strong, uh, yeah. strong um, opinion about this in the position, yeah. especially if it comes to rape or child, child abuse. That's yeah, like, yeah, yeah. for it's me, it's difficult. like. You, you know, it's shut off, it's yeah. shut off, man. It's like you, you, you are a child molester yeah. and you, you need to be removed from society. You know? Yes. Yeah. Like, yeah, that's I it, agree. you know? Yeah. Like, th there is no no reconciliation here, you know what I mean? Yeah. But any other crimes, it's like, yeah, of course, it's like, hey, man. You yeah. just need some life coaching here, you know? There's yeah. a better way to live your life, you know? Yeah. You don't need to put people in jail for, you know what I mean? Yeah. For yeah. everything. I mean, our jail system is not great. It's, um, they don't really uh, get much re rehabilitation. It's, it's a kind of broken system, really. There's too many people in jail, not enough people to look after them, not enough support services. So it's a vicious cycle for a lot of them. 
you know. Like they, they don't get better. No. They get out, they do the same thing, yeah. they go yeah, back. It's a pattern, it's a, yeah. It's it's a, a, yeah. yeah they're, they're indoctrinated or that's what they do. Like and they become criminals. Yeah. If you yeah. weren't criminal, you become in jail. Definitely, kind of yeah. It's, I mean, like, it's like a jail school. It's yeah. like a, I mean, it's like a jail academy. Mm -hmm. Prison is the criminal academy. Yeah. I mean, you just yeah. become something you weren't even in the first place. Yeah. You know, because not everybody committing crime out of bad intent. I mean, yeah. it's just life situations, you know. Absolutely. Not everybody is a criminal who commits yeah. crime. That's what I'm trying to say. Yeah. Would you agree with that? Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Have you seen things like that when people commit crime, but in your heart it's like, man, the guy is just really not a criminal. And, you know, he could yeah. be just talk to and uh, you don't need to send him to prison you know what I mean? yeah. you have seen that yeah I mean situations are complicated you know some of the domestic violence uh, you know there's always things behind that and maybe it's alcohol drugs uh, they've had a traumatic life they've been abused when they were a child so there's all this conditioning where they they've got this kind of normality and I'm not and I'm not uh, condoning violence you know domestic violence but you have to try and understand where they're coming from, you know, um, which can be difficult. And, you know, the other person that's the victim could, could be the same, you know, they generally come together, you know, alcoholics come together, mm. drug users. Yeah, you, you so it's a drunk. toxic mix. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Just get violent out of your yeah. mind. And yeah. That happens a lot. Yeah. Like alcohol based crimes, do you see that mostly? It's huge mostly. That's mostly. the biggest problem. Yeah, and it's clogging up the hospitals. Uh, yeah, the justice system is. It's so you see, problem. how, like knowing that firsthand, how do you put two things together? The alcohol, which is legal, and yeah. the worst drug in the world, in my opinion, yeah. personally, violence sprouts from alcohol. Yeah. Totally, yeah. To totally. Car accidents, yeah. murder, rape, yeah. fights, stabbing. This is alcohol yeah. crime. This is what I have seen where I was living, you know? Yeah. So, and this is all cool, socially accepted, yeah. legal. Yeah, it's crazy. And then you have medicine, which turns you to a better person, Yeah. helps you with, you know, quitting all the harmful, self-destructive and violent behaviors. It yeah. completely transforms you. Yeah. To a better, peaceful, loving person. Yeah, absolutely. Just a fuck. This yeah. is just a fuck. How, how do you put the two? Like, it's, you can't, it's just see it as insanity. Um, it's just so socially acceptable to get drunk, have a fight, um, cause problems. Or they'll say, oh, well, I did that because I was drunk. It's like, it's like oh, yeah. sorry, but I was yeah. drunk. I just killed yeah. somebody, but. I was like, oh, okay, then yeah. don't worry about it. Didn't know what I was doing. Yeah. <laughs> it, it's absolute insanity. And then you've got somebody, someone maybe at home uh, or somewhere doing plant medicine with others. Peaceful. Peaceful, full of love, that beautiful connection with people. And you get busted with a SWAT team. Yeah. It's, uh, <laughs> Beaten, totally taken to jail, yeah. and charged. Yeah. And this, it, this stems from the government um, spreading... Uh, misinformation to say that drugs are dangerous, it's a gateway to serious drugs like heroin, cocaine. I mean, they have a point when speaking about the drugs, street drugs. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. We're this is about, not yeah. plant medicine, this yeah. is like the, they're confusing the two yeah, because they completely different things. Yeah, they, so they for them, this is drugs. Yeah, yeah. They just see it as the same thing. Yeah. You know, uh, yeah. street drugs, plant medicine. Yeah, yeah that's, that, that's where the mistake is. That's because if it. they would say, hey, if you smoke meth, it can cause violence. Yeah. Yes, of course, I completely agree with you. That can fry your brain, then next thing you do, you're rubbing a grandmother somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. You know, that's completely logical, yeah. you know? But we're not talking about meth here. Yeah. We're talking about plant medicine. We're talking about something that's going to uh, change somebody dramatically to a better person. Yeah, completely. It's like a completely different world. Yeah. But for them, it's all one thing. That's what the problem is. Yeah. So yeah. they need to be educated about this. Okay. That's what I'm trying to convey in my books. That's yeah. the message. Like, yeah. plant medicine is a completely different world. Yeah, thousands of years of tradition, sanctioned and approved by time, by people, yeah. by everybody, and then you're talking about a completely different category. Yeah, which is a street drugs, lab made. Yeah, I mean, th th we're talking not even 
this is like different dimensions we're talking about. You know? Yeah, I mean, how many people do you? I'm not aware of anyone that's uh, been in the process of doing plant medicine and they've done something wrong and ended up in jail or they've ended up in hospital. It's just unheard of. Um, so yeah, thing, things need to change. Uh, it's just going to be a slow, slow patient. Yeah. Patient so what do you think? Who, or who do you think it's against that in the government? Like, why wouldn't want? Would it, This is the question. Would the government wouldn't want to have a more peaceful society, more, you know, non-violent? Yeah, you have to question it because uh, I think their fear is that we just um, stop being in that system where you know we're working, paying taxes, mm -hmm. um, you know, buying houses, and just uh, and the government and the commercial, the you know, capital side of things are just leeching off us all the time. Money, money, money. Uh, that's all they want from us, and so maybe they fear that we won't be as productive. We won't mm -hmm. be or consumers. We won't be drones. Less con yeah, yeah, absolutely. Less consumers. Yeah, because you become more productive. aware of what what we, what you're buying. You become less attached to objects, materialistic mm -hmm. stuff, and you become more aware of what you're buying. That's going to affect the environment as well. Um, so you're more conscious, more uh, thinking for yourself. You know, I don't watch the news. I haven't got TV. I'm just questioning the government. Yeah, because questioning absolutely. The school, you know. Yeah. And psychedelics do that. You break down those barriers where you cut across cultures, races, um, genders, that kind of thing. Uh, and I think they maybe fear loss of control. Um, and I think that's what. So they would prefer to have the violence and the, the stabbing and everything. Well, you look at well the, yeah. the tax they put on alcohol and you know how freely available it is make it socially acceptable and then everyone's buying it and we're all buying into that consumerism and I don't think I think they just accept the violence that comes with it and not with the business yeah like that's the like the, that's the cost of doing business yeah. for them it's yeah, like yeah. okay we need to sell this to people or yeah. people kill each other in the process okay you know that's yeah. the I mean that's the, that's the cost of doing business yeah know? absolutely and that, that for me is around the Covid situation they just want to control us Use fear, use the news. Uh, so we're again, we, we feed it into the pharmaceutical companies. Well, yeah. Which control the government. Yeah, I mean, yeah, absolutely. That's that's just yeah. That's just a fact. Yeah. You know, they have the politicians in the pockets, and they just do what they want. Yeah. You know? So, so you're not afraid to say all this thing. Sorry. You're not afraid to say that thing on the camera. That if they look at that, like no, I'll say it was. you speak like a domestic terrorist, you know. Yeah. <laughs> in America, it's domestic terrorist speech. Yeah, no, I don't know UK, but America, that's what it is. No, I, I, I freely speak about it, um, and I, I was really strong, um, really clear about not having the vaccinations. So did it force you? No, that's. I thought it was going to come in. Um, uh -huh. And I had friends in the National Health Service, nurses, doctors, uh -huh. uh, and they were bringing it in uh, with them. So I, my, my main fear was they would bring it in. But I would always, always very clear with myself and that I'm not having that, those vaccinations. But what if they say, like, okay, we'll fire you? Yeah, then they'll have to fire There you go. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I feel that strongly about it. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. very powerful because many people went along with it. Yeah. For not losing the job. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, no fighting here, and, and and I don't I don't judge those people. It's, it's yeah. their own decision, and I can't. You know, I don't know their situation, um, and I think that was the biggest fear for them: losing their jobs, what they're going to do. Uh, but for me, I really felt like I was um, going against my authentic principles if I had those vaccinations, and so I was prepared to. To leave the job. Leave the job if, if needs be. So it's not mandatory in UK among the uh, no. uh, police officer. No, it was initially mandatory for uh, care workers, you know, in care homes, residential homes, that kind of thing. Then they were bringing it into nurses and doctors. Uh, so it was never ever mentioned, um, but naturally you could see from the police officers were going to be. Mm. I think to in have the it. states it's different. It's yeah. a mandatory, it's a yeah. military and police, yeah. if not they fire you. 
Yeah, I've, I've seen a few clips on YouTube, Canadian police as well. Canadian too, yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Well, that's very strong stance for sure. I totally support that. Yeah. And it's very beautiful to hear that from someone like you who is working for the government. Mm. Like you're a government employee, you're a federal employee, right? Yeah. And you still have your stance and you're still not afraid to speak your truth. That's very powerful. Yeah. That's very inspiring. And that's come from the plant medicines, like being strong. Um, in who you are. Yeah, yeah. So before plant medicine, you wouldn't... I would have just towed the line. Yeah. That's it. You totally would just take the job, yeah. not questioning anything. Yeah. yeah, do what they say. I... I have the accountant here, we need to... Okay, uh, okay. Uh, we need to stop it for like two minutes. Yeah. It's so the, the plan medicine makes you authentic. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And makes you speak your truth yeah. and stand by it. Yeah. So before plan medicine, you would never say that. You would never do that. You no, I'll be fair. I'm saying that. You will be afraid to get fired, yeah. to be judged, Absolutely. to be kind of yeah, outcast, yeah. outcast, ostracized. Yeah, yeah you sure. have those fears. Yeah, but with the medicine, it's just like it's just uh, whatever. Uh, man. It's like I still it speak empowered me, truth. gave me courage to um, you know when the you know when, when it's the right situation to speak about it. Uh, certainly about the vaccination situation. Uh, and I would, I'd, I'd do my own research and I'd start, when people start to talk about, um, oh, I've got the next injection coming up, I would say, well, have you seen the figures for the um, people that have died from this injection? Um, or they've been injured. badly, badly injured, yeah. Um, to try and bring balance, because the government wasn't doing that, they wouldn't bring me out of the side, it was just fear, yeah. fear, 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 fear. If you don't have it, we're all going to die. So were you called conspiracy theorists? They would. I, they did start to uh, laugh at me about certain things because they were uncomfortable with it. Because they probably knew uh, there was some truth in that, uh, but they were just going along with what the government was saying. And so, I suppose the defence mechanism is to, to laugh at the people that are coming out with the facts. Uh, yeah, they, they would laugh at me. I didn't care. So you were the only guy in the whole department. In the whole police force, probably. <laughs> yes. Yeah. That's so powerful. Uh, mm -hmm. And I found it really difficult. I came back from the rainforest and I didn't think about quitting because I didn't think I could face it. Mm -hmm. uh, but I did a lot of integration work uh, with a friend uh, I was in the forest with. I uh, did an online course with him over several months. And it was perfect timing. It really helped me put everything into perspective and just work on that courage be authentic um, and sometimes I, I need to be quiet about it just have to be sensitive about the situation um, like where and what you say yeah but if, if someone asks me directly I'll be truthful mm -hmm. just say guys guys we need quiet please no, no worries so hmm. yeah I've had, a, I've had a lot of teachings from plant medicines about being truthful being authentic uh, and having the strength to do that, which is difficult when you're on your own. Yeah, you have no support there. No. You don't have anyone who supports you. No. So you are feeling like completely alone yeah. with your own worldview. Yeah, and, and actually, it's been really helpful because uh, sometime last year it was extremely stressful at work, a lot of demand. Um, and I couldn't handle it anymore, and I needed that time out of work through stress. Um, it was just too much in my head. I was doing a lot of meditation, and it just came to me that you need to step away and just have that break. Uh, and you got all that stigmatism about mental health still in the, in the police. Oh, he's gone loopy, kind of thing. But I just knew it was the right thing to do. So I, I stepped away for about three months to get myself uh, yeah. let it together, yeah, and more alive. Um, and it's the first time I've ever done that. If it, if it wasn't for the plant medicines and the work that I've been doing, I probably would have just carried on and on and on because I've been in similar, similar situations where it's just too much, but you just keep going. But then, then you break down. Yeah, at yeah, some you point you break down. You can't, you can't carry on. Take it. So at no. some point you just become an alcoholic or yeah. drug addict yourself or 
Yeah. Or you stupid <laughs> criminal, I don't know. Yeah. Like, did you see something like that happen to the detective? There's a lot of colleagues that turn to drink. Yeah, yeah. yeah drink, just drink like, daily. Yeah. You know, there's so there's so much you can play Sherlock Holmes without consequences. Yeah. yeah. You know? Yeah. And Absolutely. like today's world is much more violent than probably in his Absolutely, time, yeah. you know. So yeah. how much you can take, how much yeah. darkness you can carry every day. You can't can you? you can only hold so much. That's it, you need a discharge, you need a yeah. proper therapy which is yeah. plant medicine. Like I would suggest this not as a mandatory because I'm against mandatory of anything. Yeah. So even in good stuff I'm against. It's like yeah. it should be personal choice, Absolutely, you know. Yeah. But I, w I would certainly, you know, have it as a recommendation, like strong recommendation for people yeah. like you to go to the rainforest, or come yeah. here, drink the medicine with us for yeah. two weeks, and just discharge, get yeah. the perspective, go back, and yeah. you know, do your work. Feeling cleansed and sensitive. Yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. Like, you know, I mean, that'd be amazing if that ever happened. Yeah, can you imagine that like yeah. the, the detectives go on a leave, how you call this, a medical leave or something? Yeah, yeah. Two weeks therapy, yeah. drink a whole tumor with us. Yeah. That would be a better <laughs> guy, I mean, for sure. Well, what happens now? They go to the doctors, they're plied with antidepressants, it doesn't help. Yeah, um, make them numb and uh, that's and it. Back in know. the cycle again. That's it, back in the cycle. Yeah, that's yeah. what it is, it's just to adjust you back to yeah. the sick system, you know? Yeah. It's not about healing you. Yeah. At, at any yeah. extent, you know. So, how was your time spending with us here, which is was very short? Still, you did something. It, it's uh, it, it feels crazy. I feel like I've been here for ages. After you know? just what four days? Yeah, yeah. Four just days just really settled down into. Uh, I've never been to Peru before. I can just feel that spiritual connection here. I just feel so at home, and then. For me, the medicine's really important to do the work, but it's also the people that you connect with, mm -hmm. the beautiful people, which they can all teach you as well. Yeah. Uh, so I've really enjoyed that. So how is the Ho Chi Minh for you so far? Yeah, it's really interesting. Uh, so the first, the first cup was very subtle, uh, but I could still feel it, and it really grounded me, um, and it really helped me just sit and watch nature, and just watch the clouds. <laughs> And it was very introspective for me. Just, just thinking, certainly thinking about my life and the situation, um, and then just really connecting with nature. So the second ceremony really helped me connect and ground. And I was just in awe of nature and just watching all the synchronicity of nature and the animals living together. Um, and it made me think about us humans destroying the planet and not working together. And, but yeah, there's, there's, there's still hope. Um, there's more and more people coming to plant medicines mm -hmm. and spreading spreading that joy. Uh, but it was a really beautiful medicine. Really, I didn't have any fear. Uh, maybe that's because of the plant medicines I've done before. Uh, I was nervous the day before, and I think that's just a kind of respect for the medicine. But yeah, it was a really beautiful experience yesterday. How different it was yesterday? Uh, it just felt a lot stronger in the body. Uh, initially, I was a bit disor disorientated, uh, just finding my way, just connecting with the medicine. I just felt a lot, felt really grounded, really open in my heart. Um, I just felt alive, I just felt it in my face. You know, I couldn't stop smiling. There were some tears, thinking about things, thinking about my daughter, um, and then connecting with others every now and again when it was the right time to do it really helped. Um, yeah, I just felt alive, that was the main thing. I just felt really connected with nature. And, um, just the awe of it all. Yeah, it was beautiful. Okay, well, there's another one tomorrow. Yeah. We'll, we'll go a bit deeper there, and then you on your way to the jungle. Yeah. To do your things. That's it. And then do you see yourself coming back? Definitely. Definitely want to do it. I uh, I retire in 17 months. Oh, so okay. that's early retirement. That's uh, 30 years. That's, oh, that's 30 years of service. Yeah. yeah. That's what. That's it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, and for me, that's that's enough for anybody. Yeah, 30 years of mental health is uh, <laughs> seriously affected. So, how old you were when you started that? 
Um, well, I started when I was 19 in the police, so yeah, yeah. yeah I'm 46 now. So. Yeah, so 50, still good, full yeah. power, just doing your life. Yeah, and I really want to uh, travel, uh, meet people, do plant medicine work. Um, I'm really, really thinking about um, building my own home off grid somewhere, mm. not beholden to the in, utility. In Europe? Community. I really don't know. It's an open, open book at the moment. Um, but no. Do you think you would uh, do some kind of, uh, or you know, propose some kind of work with police department, with detectives, kind of making a bridge, so to speak, I would, to I, bring yeah. into plant medicine? I would love to carry on with the meditation and build on that. Um, I think that's the opener uh, yeah. because they, they can accept that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's, it's like intermediate step. Yeah, yeah, they can see they can see the benefits of that. It's not too crazy. Mm -hmm. you know. And you don't in, ingest any plants, which in no. their minds is drugs, you know. Yeah. But it's a, it's a foundation, yeah. Yeah, and definitely yeah, yeah, for sure. Introduce it for yeah to, to them and just kind of uh, you know uh, giving back, so, so to speak. It's yeah. Like, I've done it for 30 years and it would be better if I would have that earlier yeah. and here I am telling you that that would be better for you yeah. and, and you can take advantage of that, you yeah. know, kind of work towards maybe decriminalization, yeah. you know. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So I know there's a lot of work going on in the background around ayahuasca uh, and making it a sacred mm -hmm. uh, ceremony, uh, you know, like a religious kind of ceremony, a lot of work with the guy in London. Um, the problem is the uh, fake, fake shamans, the people making yeah. money out of it. Uh, I know of situations where they're just doing too many different plant medicines in a short space of time, and they're not holding yeah, the space. They mess you up. They yeah. mess you up. People sure. have died, mm -hmm. uh, you know, with a boga and things like that. And that's when it gets into the press, and then yeah, it's total course. fear factor, then, isn't it? You see, that's what happens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it, it doesn't matter that a thousand people just were murdered last week. I know. From alcohol. It's just normalized. That's you okay. Get, yeah. You think about how many people are doing plant medicines and this one person in the, in the world has died. Yeah. And maybe have a medical situation. Yeah, of course. And like I say, they're not holding the space properly. Yes. But that's Absolutely. just... You cannot die from plant medicine. If you do it right, yeah. if, you, if, you, if, you, if you keep the diet, if yeah. you not come in full of drugs and alcohol yeah. if you do the proper preparation yeah. it's 100 percent safe yeah absolutely it's not possible yeah to that yeah it's just not possible it's safe medicines yeah. you know even when we talk about ayahuasca it's still safe if yeah. it's right you know yeah if you're still in the right situation by the right practitioner yeah exactly, uh, and exactly. After it. but you see that's part of the education that has to be brought yeah that has to be discussed it's not just the medicine it's everything around that yeah like that's what I'm trying to do in my books, you know, yeah. it's like bring the message through and yeah. that's you know, what you touch it on other yeah. aspects of it. Yeah. Yeah. All these people that have come here are going back out into their lives and just sharing that love yeah. and planting the seed. And people do. I mean, people have said to me, I've totally changed. Uh, and they can see a change in me, a lot more open, a lot lighter. Um, and more open for people to discuss their feelings with me, mm -hmm. uh, and I think yeah, they're actually drawn to that. Uh, and maybe that will just be enough. Just a second, I need to get bullets and say good luck. Yeah, the outside. Bullets. <laughs> <laughs> baby. Come, 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 come. come. Okay, well, so what is it that you would like to share with people who would watch that? Both regular citizens and you know, servicemen. I think um, obviously you need to start somewhere, and I think meditation is a good way to start because it brings you into your awareness and then becomes aware of your emotions and your thoughts. Uh, what's going on and uh, I think it may then just trigger there's something out there that you're missing uh, there's a kind of hole in your spirit uh, and you may just then for me for me it was just total suffering 
through with the situation that I was going through, which is kind of hit rock bottom. Uh, I don't know, there's people in a lot of worse situations, but for me, you know, the marriage was everything. We were splitting up, the kids were going to move out. Um, it just totally destroyed me. And I think sometimes you have to go through that suffering for then some light bulb to come on to think, well, actually. And, that, and then I had a call in to do plant meditation. Yeah, sorry, plant medicine. And the marriage was falling apart because of your job, because of the stress, because of your shutdown emotionally? Um, certainly <coughs> part of it was about my job and I took my wife for granted. Uh, she was looking after the children, she was working as well. Mm. Um, I was working ridiculous hours. And for like me... Night time too? Yeah, yeah. Like you working just, into the early hours, going back in the morning, day after day. Like you go home at three in the morning, they yeah. call you, you have to go. Yeah. yeah. And that can be any, any night. Yeah. And And I just accepted it because I felt I felt I was doing being righteous, and I was what I was doing was worthwhile and uh, helping society. Did you have that? Yeah, yeah. Kind of calling to help yeah, society, yeah. to keep society safe. Yeah, yeah. That was Definitely. the motive. But yeah, it was really, really. I suppose my morals that you shouldn't take from people, you shouldn't inflict violence on people, and I really wanted to try and do something about it. Um, mm -hmm. And it just took over my life, and I became institutionalized. Uh, and I would just do what my boss said. Yeah, just worked ridiculous hours. Took my wife for granted. She was holding the family together. I was never there. Mm -hmm. uh, when the children were sick, I just expected her to, to take, take care of them. Take, you know, take time off work and just take, take care of them. And so she then obviously withdrew from me. Uh, Emotionally, and, yeah. And she met somebody else. Mm. and then dropped it out and then the whole world exploded. Yeah, of course. Um, Did you want to kill the guy? Initially, yeah, there was a lot of anger, yeah, but I've managed to uh, totally accept it and let it go. Uh, gone through all those emotions. And I, and I think the anger was because I didn't think I'd done anything wrong because I didn't, I wasn't yeah. aware of what I was doing. You thought she's a bad person. Yeah, yeah, she's, she's just gone off with this guy, you, yeah, yeah, she's betrayed me betrayed my trust you know how dare she but actually when you see yeah the, the, uh, the consequences and the, yeah, the, yeah. the causation Re yeah. realization that actually it's just as much my fault as hers and that's that's what you understood in the plant medicine later yeah 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 that's, what, that's what came to me yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, so, so now yeah, the situation is good yeah yeah really strong yeah strong bond yeah yeah we, we sometimes do plant medicines together or we'll go off You know, she's been to Peru a couple of times. I've been to Brazil and now Peru. Um, so yeah, that that's just my frustration. I can't do it in the UK. Um, yeah, it's just not not something I can do. So uh, you know, I have to travel across the world to to do it. But for me, it's totally worth it. I can't say it enough. It's just totally transformed my life. So what happened if you do I ask in UK police come? You get arrested with the yeah. virtue of the hook, or you look I lose my job. Mm. Potentially going to jail. It just depends on the right. situation. It'd just be uh, just rough. Yeah, yeah. Rough handling yeah. of everybody. Yeah. And so, yeah, for me, it's just not worth it. Uh, yeah, yeah, of course. Of course. Yeah. 30 years of life given to this. So just yeah. Give it another year and a half and then just get out and do it right, you know, yeah. where it's legal. Yeah. It's more wise, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah, it, it's it's tempting because I know how much uh, I get from doing plant medicine. But ultimately, if I lose my job, I can't look after my family. Yeah, exactly. Um, exactly. Roof over my head. Yeah. Everything you build. Yeah, you nice got to be pragmatic about things. You know, so. Yeah, I agree with that. I agree. So, so are you officially part of the Scotland Yard thing? What is the scope of No, so that, that's, uh, that's, t that's the Metropolitan Police. So Scotland Yard is part of the Metropolitan Police, which is just London. Uh, uh, only the city of London? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I work uh, pretty much in the centre of the country. Um, uh, yeah. So But that's a federal... What, what, what you call it? Uh, we would call it um, kind of county police. So I cover a county, so I live in Staffordshire as a county, so that county is where I work, so I cover that whole county. 
So you're a county detective, or what, what you officially call it? So yeah, I'm a, I'm a, we, we call it, I'm a detective sergeant, <coughs> excuse me, and we call it the CID, which is a criminal investigation department, so it's, a, it's all the serious crime. Mm. That's the heaviest. That's the yeah. Heaviest. Yeah. I've uh, been doing that mm. for many years. So do you have any picture of you, like, <coughs> on the job that I can share with people in the video? Uh, like something? With a badge or form. Are you doing uniform or are you doing civilian? Civilian. Civilian. It's yeah. Like you are undercover cop. Okay. Um, like nobody knows that you are a cop. No, it's not that obvious, but um, I'm not, I don't do undercover work, surveillance, that kind of thing. We uh, use other, other departments to do that for whatever we need, you know, whatever the investigation. But you don't have any pictures like with a police cop, a car or somewhere, you I know? Don't. You don't have any? No, it's just like, yeah, yeah. Caught. You know, shirt and tie. Shirt and tie. <laughs> yeah. that, that's your that's yeah, your yeah. uniform. Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. Okay. So you carry a gun? No, we don't in the UK. You have a gun? You don't? No, no, we uh, don't. How you deal with we, bad guys? We just have our uh, kind of a metal baton and a pepper spray. Uh, but if that's it's it? if if there's uh, any kind of firearms involved, then we use a firearms team. Oh, so you to make the arrests? Somebody. Yeah, yeah. We've got specialist teams that we can call on. So you don't go on the scene by yourself. No, no. You go with people yeah. or uh, armed officers. Trained. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. And they're there 24 hours a day. Mm. Mm. I'm quite glad that I don't carry a gun, actually. Because if, if there was a situation where I felt that I needed to use it... Like I'd the guy it. who, you know, your wife <laughs> went with, you know? Yeah. <laughs> I, don't, I, I just... I, I, I don't honestly feel I'd have the support from my bosses. So I'm glad that I'm not put in that mm. position. Yeah. But you're still in danger, no? Yeah. Like when you, know. you can be. Um, I mean, our investigations are a lot more planned if we're making arrests. Uh, sometimes we have to react, but generally these are uniformed officers that are really at the front line and at more risk than me. Uh, yeah. If I'm you know, planning an operation, I'll make sure there's you know specialist officers there to uh, support us. <coughs> so yeah, the, the risk is less. The risk is still there, but less. Like in your in your opinion or in your knowledge, in your awareness, uh, how, how what is the percentage, or maybe like how big is the focus on plant medicine in the police world? Like, are they even care about this? I or? don't even know about it. They're totally ignorant to it. They wouldn't. I mean, I've spoken about plant medicines and I've never heard of it. So it's not like on the daily agenda, like, you know, like, let's find who who's doing ayahuasca today in London. No. It's not, not that. No, they wouldn't have a clue. But if you get caught, then you have a problem. Yeah, the, 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 the situation would be, like I say, if it wasn't a proper space, proper practitioner and someone became ill, ended up going to hospital because of that, then, then they huh. would look into it. Oh, I see. Yeah. Or, but you know, not like chess. It's not on the radar. No. Really. I've, I've never I've never experienced where we've been told about someone doing ayahuasca ceremonies, for example, uh, and then they've done something about but it. But do you have uh, intelligence on that? I mean, people know? I'm not aware of it. I'm not aware of that, no. um, like I say, I think it just needs, it would need a trigger for, for the police to become involved, like... Seriously something has to happen. Yeah, seriously injured or yeah. someone died. Uh, then that would open it up. They would then look into it and say, ah, actually, is this a problem? Is this happening elsewhere? And it would really focus in there. But it's not the case. No. Not that I'm aware of. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you would be aware because you're yeah. working with the, what, criminal investigations. Like yeah. That's where the, all the yeah. stuff happening. So yeah. if that would be the case, you would be aware yeah. of that. Yeah. I think, yeah, it would... Once, a, once it becomes a problem, uh, if it did ever become a problem, then yeah, the focus would be taken into that. So the the suggestion for people who do that in Europe would be just do it safe. Yeah, and yeah. Then you never. Just you be know. being sensible, and I think um, social media. Just be really careful about what goes out, and who's who's spreading what. I think. Uh, yeah, because we, we tap into that. We've got intelligence officers that if you look at social media and see what's going on. Different groups. Yeah. So yeah. the intelligence is available. Yeah. yeah. Everybody yeah. knows.
But yeah, you know, uh, extremist groups, terrorism. Um, all use, you know, all use, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. It's like okay, extremists, domestic terrorists. Yeah, they probably they probably would Ayahuasca, say it's extreme. Yeah, uh, attendees. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, they just wouldn't. They wouldn't know what to make of it. Yeah. So hopefully it never happens. Interesting. Mm. Well, is there anything else you want to share that you think uh, is staying important? Uh? No, I don't think so. I mean, it's. Uh, I'm just really grateful for having the opportunity to come here and I appreciate it's a short time and you probably well you would want to work with me a lot longer to introduce the medicine more. Uh, it's just the situation I'm in. Yeah. You know, I don't mean to be disrespectful no, to, course, to you or to the medicine. Of course, uh, you do what you can. I mean, yeah, you yeah. have things to do. So. But I, I, I fully intend to come back at some point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. for longer. And, yeah. You know, now you had a touch, you have yeah. seen uh, a glimpse yeah. of it, so it's enough to know that it's real yeah. and worthwhile. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And I've always been curious about it. Uh, I know Emma spent some time here with you, and she was one that really opened my curiosity too, really. How did you feel when she was here and telling you, hey, Dad, I'm here doing for two months? I was jealous. <laughs> I was envious of her. She's such a free spirit. And to relax, And to to become uh, aware and conscious and use plant medicine at such a young age, I think it's fantastic. Yeah. You know, that's the only thing for me. I'm obviously late running my start to tap into that. Yeah. Uh, but that's how it was meant to be. Well if I did what you when I was when I was nineteen, I would yeah. save a lot of trouble to my parents. Yeah. You know, yeah. I would not do things that I have done, and there would be drugs and police in my life, and yeah. all the darkest uh, thing you can imagine. You know, yeah. so that's certainly. Yeah, and they've got less. They've got less stuff to get rid of as well. Um, you know, really, they're not yeah. up of working with the medicine. Whereas myself and you know, I've got friends that are older than me that use plant medicine, and they're still going through a lot of processes. You know that they've. Either dawn or past, past stuff that's gone on in their life, and they're still getting rid of that. Really, do we then move forward? Or, you know, if you're younger, you've got less stuff to get rid of, haven't you? Generally. Well, thank you very much for your time and for willingness to speak. Yeah. I was excited to have you on the video, and we yeah. can talk about open about plant medicine and stuff. Yeah. And I didn't think we'll talk about vaccines, but. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but we talk about more than I thought, which yeah. is very good, of course. And um, I think that's very inspiring conversation. Yeah. And um, I hope it will help other people to open up and to look into plant medicine. Hopefully, yeah. you know, you know, as a tool to get well. Yeah, that's a way to get well. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, especially living in the crazy COVID world, you know. Yeah, it's all stress and fear and control, yeah, isn't it's it? A, yeah. It's a, it's all that. So, thank you very much. You're welcome. And um, come back yeah. to Peru whenever Love you come to. back. Yeah. All right, thank you. I might even stay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, who uh, knows? you're going to do that too. Who knows? I might. Well, that, that happens. <laughs> yeah, yeah. People come here, they, want, they don't want to go home. No, I can it's see like that, yeah. I want to be your neighbor. It's yeah. Like, okay, and then there's some <laughs> fields around. You yeah, can yeah by a, a, a part of it you know yeah. so it happens i mean yeah it's a peaceful beautiful place where medicine is legal yeah and you live your life in love and yeah you know. yeah i love it I, you know i've only been in a very short space of time and i feel at home yeah know, which is less than a week you know. yeah it's like it usually takes a week for people to just adjust to the altitude and kind yeah. of start feeling it yeah. Right, you know, mm -hmm. so the work starts like after a week or two. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. So it, it's kind of been expedited in your case. Yeah. Sounds good, Kyle. So, yeah, thank you and uh, good luck on your journey. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for your help yeah, for no, that journey. It's the, the most important rescue mission you're on. Yeah, so. <laughs> yeah crazy. In 30 you years. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'll be back. Yeah, <laughs> that's like Terminator. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. Okay. Very good. Thank you very much.